Good morning. Hope everybody's having a good Sunday morning so far. Um, so I was going to Kroger the other day, went to Kroger the other day, and pulled into the parking spot and realized I didn't know how I'd gotten there. Now, obviously, I knew that I had taken the route that I always take to Kroger, but I didn't remember the trip there. I guess even though I don't have a Tesla or one of those other fancy cars, I guess I've kind of got my own type of autopilot. My guess is that all of you have done something similar, that you have driven somewhere and then not remembered getting there. You're busy thinking about something else. Uh, probably even have decided to go one place and then ended up halfway or three quarters of your way to work or some place that you go to frequently realizing you're going to the wrong place. So we do have kind of an autopilot uh, where we do things sometimes without thinking about them, especially when we do them frequently. Um, and that's just something I think we ought to think about a little bit as we're going to take the Lord's Supper here uh, soon, is, is this something that we do so frequently that we do it without thinking about it? Uh, we know that Paul tells us that if we take the Lord's Supper in a, in a manner that we're not supposed to, in other words, if we're not thinking about it, focusing on it, if we're not uh, engaging in some amount of self-reflection, then, then that's sin for us. That's not how we're supposed to do it. Uh, I remember Todd Sprague speaking some months back uh, before the Lord's Supper, and he was talking about how quickly we lose focus. Uh, when we're taking the Lord's Supper, and it is amazing how quickly my mind veers off uh, during the Lord's Supper if I don't, you know, tell myself uh, to, to keep focused on it. Um, you know, even though the first century church set the example for us, they, they came together on the first day of the week for the purpose of taking the Lord's Supper. That was the example that we have, and that's why we do it every first day of the week. But despite that example, you know, there's a lot of people out there that say, if we do that once a week, then it loses its significance. Uh, that uh, it somehow doesn't mean as much. And maybe uh, that's the reason some people take it without thinking about it. Um, in fact, a lot of people take the Lord's Supper maybe once a month maybe once a quarter. There are folks who take it maybe twice a year. But do we really need to take the Lord's Supper less frequently than once a week in order to focus on it and for it to have meaning for us? Can you think of any event in all of human history that is more important to each and every one of us? than when Christ sacrificed himself, shed his blood, so that each of us can have our sins removed for all time. I can't. In fact, I'm guessing that each one of us has some other event or ritual that we take part in, probably even more frequently than once a week, and yet somehow it maintains significance for us. And we don't lose the ability to think about it and enjoy it. You know, thinking personally, and this will probably not come as a surprise to those of you who know me well, each night after dinner, some point after dinner, I eat something sweet. Maybe a cookie or, well, maybe a box of cookies. <laughs> you know, a little Debbie snack cake. Have you tried the new peanut butter cream pies? Ice cream? I eat something sweet every night. And every single night, I savor every bite. I'm busy thinking about the texture. I'm compar comparing it to the sweet I had the night before. And when I take that last bite, I'm sad that it's done, that it's all gone. I do that every night. I focus on it. It has meaning <laughs> to me every night. And I'm sure we all have something like that. Um, I would say to you that we don't need to take the Lord's Supper less frequently 
than once a week in order to focus on it, in order for it to have meaning for us. We simply need to uh, prepare our minds correctly. We need to go through uh, a process of eliminating extraneous thoughts, things that are weighing on us. Get, do whatever it is you need to do to push those, push those out. So as we're about to take the Lord's Supper, push all those thoughts and concerns out. Maybe some of those are things that you need to bring to God now as we pray uh, and to do some self-reflection. But if anything, remembering what Christ did for us once a week is the least we can do. So if you would, please pray with me as we uh, give thanks for the bread. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you now. We are so thankful for your plan of salvation, for Christ's part his part in carrying it out and his willingness to come and, and uh, lead a perfect example for us, his willingness to uh, suffer uh, the pain and the agony that he suffered uh, for us in order to be the one perfect sacrifice for all time for our sins. We pray that uh, those of us who will partake of the bread, which represents your son's body, would do so in a manner that pleases you. It's in your son's name. Amen. All right, before I say the prayer for the fruit of the vine, if any of you need more time to reflect on the other, the other just go ahead and hit pause. I, I suggest, encourage you to hit pause and reflect on that as much as you need to. But now we'll say the prayer for the, uh, for the uh, grape juice. Our Heavenly Father, we again come to you and we're again thankful for the uh, for sending your Son as a sacrifice for us, for his willingness to do so, to shed his blood that, uh, that cleanses us all. Uh, we pray that each of us who, who takes it uh, does so in a worthy manner, that we are able to, that we're able to focus on it, and that we'll be able to understand the significance that it has for each and every one of us. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Um, also, I suggest you go ahead and, and pause it if you want more time there for that as well. Just go ahead and pause this video. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap up by saying um, that the church still needs uh, funds to operate. So we want to encourage all of you to send in a check or however it is that you give your offering to the church so that the church has the funds it needs to operate and, and to do reach, reach out and, and all of that uh, kind of thing. That is it. I hope you all enjoy your Sunday.